question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to the witnesses, thank you for being here. It's actually great to have all the witnesses here in person. This is a novel thing in the 118th Congress, so really appreciate <clears throat> your, your attendance. Um, a couple of things. It's been stated through the hearing uh, that you know we want to make sure that oversight is being conducted, of course. Um, but I would like to remind a lot of my colleagues and a lot of the freshmen who are here for the first time, there was no oversight over any of these dollars in the last Congress. I know that because I sat on this committee. And there were no oversight hearings about anything associated with pandemic spending. So I'm glad that we're tackling this now and it's critical because the other thing that's kind of in the news cycle, uh, especially today, tomorrow, be with us for a couple months, is uh, we have hit our debt ceiling. We are out of money, folks. $31.5 trillion. We don't have new money. And so if you're going to take account of having to potentially raise the, the debt ceiling in the United States of America, you have to take account of how the federal government goes through the process of spending its money, whether through normal times or even through pandemic times. Um, Mr. Chairman, I want to submit for the record an article by Politico. It, the title of the article is Biden Administration Reroutes Billions in Emergency Stockpile COVID Funds to the Border Crunch. That's the article. The article states that um, the administration went through a process of reappropriating, re or moving around almost two billion dollars um, from the from money supposed to go to the strategic national stockpile, and also funds intended to help study long COVID that was at the National Institute of Health, and rerouted that to actually help house migrants coming across the southern border because of the president's reckless border policy. So, Mr. Dodaro, are you aware of this reshuffling of dollars from the pandemic emergency to the southern border, um, in my view, failed strategy of the president? Yes. And Mr. Dodaro, when the president made this rerouting, what were some of the uses of funds that it was used for at the southern border? I, I don't have that information right now. We did, I'm, I'm aware of the situation and what happened, uh, but I don't know, you know the details. Okay. Well, one of the things that you know, I will request from you and your office is could you provide the committee sure. those details? Because it's going to be important for the Oversight Committee to understand that when money was shuffled from pandemic response to border policy, which, by the way, was just a, uni a unilateral policy shift at the beginning of the Biden administration, that could have put American citizens at risk during the pandemic. And the reason why this is illustrative is because if we go down the line of setting precedents on how funding is going to be used, we should have an idea of what administrations have done in the past. So I think this is actually very critical information. One other point, um, there is money that came through the American Rescue Plan, um, the $1.9 trillion quote unquote COVID bailout of the American economy. I say quote unquote because it really didn't work. But a bunch of that money is actually supposed to go to state and local governments, including to school districts through ESSER funds. Now, Mr. Dodaro, there is another tranche of this money that is slated to go out. This goes to the previous question by Mr. Palmer about, uh, about obligated funds somewhere to the tune of half a trillion dollars that is slated to go out. And the president has now said that he's going to end the COVID emergency effective May 11th. If the COVID emergency ends effective May 11th, what is going to happen with these ESSER funds that are obligated but have not yet been transmitted? I'll have our attorneys take a look at that to make sure, because we have an appropriation law attorneys that provide assistance. But I think, I'm, I'm not sure it's tied, the funding's tied to the National Emergency Declaration in terms of what's been appropriated already. And I know some of the funds are available for use up to 2026, some up to 2030. So I don't know if the termination of the uh, national emergency would trump what is already in the legislation in terms of how available those funds are made. But I'll, I'll have our attorneys take a look at it. My guess would be that the, the appropriation uh, would be the governing factor uh, for the um, uh, uses of those funds in the future, that they would still be available. But I, I don't know for sure. I'll, I'll, have, I'll double check on that. There are some funding things, particularly in Medicaid, for example, that would have to be changed that are tied to the National Emergency Declaration. 
Agreed. Medicaid is one of those things that is tied right. to the national, national right. emergency. Right. I would just proffer for the committee that if we're going to go down this, this road of having to find a way to raise our debt ceiling, one of the things we should do is we should end letting money go out the door that was tied to the pandemic. That is now essentially over. With that, I yield back.